Hello, I'm Brian McCarson, and I'm really grateful to be here at the Industrial IoT Partner Summit and invited to talk to you about how AI technologies are going to revolutionize manufacturing and smart cities in the world. At Intel, we have a vision for what the factory and city of the future is going to look like. And we're going to see more and more solutions transition to autonomy, whether it's in a smart city deployment or a smart factory deployment, more and more business outcomes are going to rely on AI and control systems to deliver a better result to end users and consumers. The way this is going to happen, though, is going to require a harmony between multiple technologies, the first of which is AI. Artificial intelligence is going to be deployed safely in ways to help provide insights into how machines and systems and people are interacting with their environment. And if you have that balanced with an effective control system, those control technologies can then take action on the insights generated from your AI system. But for both of those things to work together, there's two other really important technologies that we think are going to be differentiating in the market. The first is you're going to have to have a way to help virtualize some of the compute functions. Whether it's high performance compute specifically tailored for the artificial intelligence domain, whether it's time sensitive networking capabilities, time coordinated compute, or real time deterministic control, more and more applications are going to rely on virtualized hardware. What this provides is a chance for a higher level of reliability, safety, and failover capability that's just going to make it easier for applications to get deployed. So that when a piece of hardware fails, rather than that whole system going down, you're going to see it seamlessly fail over to another backup system. And that application, that system, that feature that you're deploying in a smart city or a smart factory is going to be able to run and operate seamlessly throughout that transition. Another ingredient that's going to be really helpful in this space is 5G. What I'm expecting to see more and more of is factories realizing the power of having a private 5G network on their premise. The power of being able to move machines from one location to another and not have to drop a new Ethernet line. The power of being able to allow mobile robotics to exist inside a factory environment and have those be seamlessly integrated in with all the other applications that are required to make that factory run smoothly. And together, all of these ingredients are going to help shape the autonomous factory and the autonomous city of the future. So how do you build that foundation for autonomy? Well, it starts with the traditional IoT business, which is critically important to make sure that your environment is outfitted with the proper sensors to be able to detect what's happening in that business, in that city, in that factory, and allow that data to be moved to a location where it can be turned into information, whether that's the cloud or on the edge. But that's a necessary but insufficient condition to drive to autonomy. You also need to have artificial intelligence and control systems that are software defined. Why is it important for them to be software defined? Because if you can't allow an application to change a configuration setting, then it's going to require someone to go out to the field and make a physical hardware change. And that's just too expensive and too cumbersome to be realistic. So having systems become software defined allows you to make them future ready. It allows you to be able to deploy new applications, new features, new microservices on existing hardware and infrastructure. And you can do that in many cases over the air and do it safely and securely. And together, this creates the foundation for an autonomous city or an autonomous factory. But there's other ingredients, like I mentioned before, that are just essential to make that work. You've got to be able to virtualize your compute. You've got to be able to have things like functional safety. If you're going to have humans interacting with robots, you've got to have things like 5G to help you connect to 
devices and machines in ways you haven't before and actually allow machines to communicate with other machines in their environment to help keep the people around them and help keep the machines safe. And Intel wants to be there in every step of that journey. Our vision is that we will provide some of the most important technological building blocks and all the enabling software capabilities that are needed to help our partners make this vision a reality. For an autonomous factory or an autonomous city to really run though, you've got to be able to migrate more and more compute and decision making to the edge. There's a lot of different definitions for what truly is the edge. If you're in a data center, you might define the edge one way. If you're at the network edge, you might define the edge another way. We're thinking about it holistically from the end-to-end -end solution. And the way we define the edge is just simply that process of making decision-making and compute resources more accessible to those endpoint devices at the extreme end of that end-to-end -end spectrum. Now that doesn't mean that there's only one right location for compute, that there's only one right approach to connectivity. There's a nearly infinite number of combinations that you could use and what's right is going to depend entirely on what you're trying to achieve with that end-to-end -end solution. But there are a few main reasons why we see a push towards the edge. Those drivers are latency, their bandwidth, security, and connectivity. In the case of latency, sometimes decisions have to be made in tens or hundreds of microseconds. If you've got an autonomous vehicle, if you've got a robot that's interfacing with other robots or could interact with humans in the environment, you don't want to wait seconds for a machine to realize someone is in harm's way. You want that decision to be made in real time. Bandwidth, there's a massive amount of data that's generated when you have AI running at the edge. A camera can be feeding terabytes of data per day to the cloud. And paying for all that data to be transferred over the network into the cloud is just not economical in all conditions. So bandwidth is another concern. Security, of course, is a main reason why some factories, for example, just don't feel comfortable allowing their critical IP, their recipe for success in manufacturing, to leave the premise of that manufacturing facility. And they want to know that they can keep all of that in a protected physical environment. And the last is simply connectivity. Sometimes there's just too much data that you could possibly distribute, or the requirements for how machines talk to one another just simply dictate you have to have a local area network to do the job. These are four main drivers for why we see more compute, connectivity, and storage moving towards the edge. In the case of autonomous manufacturing, there's several approaches that Intel's taking to try to really enable the ecosystem to achieve this promise of the fourth industrial revolution and achieve a level of autonomy in industrial systems. What we're trying to accomplish is taking that heart of the factory floor, that industrial PC, and outfit it with all the technologies that are needed so it can become a center point for that edge computing activity. The industrial PC of the past was critical in that it connected machines to the factory network, it ran applications like manufacturing execution systems with management systems, but industrial PCs of the future are gonna do a lot more. You're going to be able to virtualize the functions of programmable logic controllers and have multiple PLCs, instead of existing physically in the environment, can exist virtually on one piece of hardware. You're going to see network video recorder functions when you've got cameras that are doing quality control or looking for people coming into an autonomous zone where you've got cobots in the environment. And you're going to be running real-time AI capabilities and needing to execute commands to robots to shut down or slow down if they detect a hazard where a human could get hurt. You're going to see other advancements in terms of machine-to-machine -machine communication through time-sensitive networking. And all of this is going to happen in an industrial PC that can come in a ruggedized form factor where maybe you've got extended temperature concerns, uh, you may not be able to have a cooling fan, so you've got to be able to dissipate all the heat that you have on that system. 
And the industrial PC of the future is going to be able to do all these things well. But this isn't a vision for what tomorrow is going to look like. This is a description of what's available today and what's proven to be working in the market today. There are other ways that Intel's trying to help in the market. For example, the work that we're doing to try to provide enabling software for AI with our, our insights effort, and the work we're doing to try to enable real-time deterministic controls with the enabling software we offer for controls. But there's other things Intel's trying to do in this space as well to make it easier for our partners and end users to gain access to all the value of the transistors that are in their hardware. Our Edge Insights and Edge Controls software ingredients are available to our partners to help make that transition to autonomy that much easier. To be able to take a microservices architectural approach to solving some of the challenges that exist in the factories. And this hardware and software enabling is coming together with Intel's Market Ready Solutions and our RFP Ready Kits to be able to show people how it works. We're not just trying to throw ingredients out to the market and see what sticks. We've been working for years with hundreds of factories across the entire breadth of the industrial segment to actually deploy solutions in factories, see how they work, make continuous improvements, and optimize those ingredients for better and better and better performance. And that's our promise to you. We're going to continue to try to make the deployment of autonomous industrial systems easier and easier with each technological evolution. Now I'm going to share with you a real example of how we've been able to help improve the performance of factories. The two videos that you see side by side is showing you how much data is being collected at the edge with edge inference and the assessment of every single frame coming off of a high definition camera that's monitoring parts coming off of a casting machine. The other image on the right is showing you just the screenshots of the individual images where edge inference is being performed and the results of that edge inference. One is an example of what data is being processed at the edge. The other is the example of what data is being sent to the cloud. And we're showing these two side by side to give you a feel for how big the opportunity is in the cloud for the modernization of the world's factories. We're talking about terabytes of new data per factory per day across the millions of factories globally that could become part of the growth of the world's cloud infrastructure. But as massive as that is, it's dwarfed by the amount of data that's being collected at the edge. At the edge, we're seeing in some cases 1,000, 2,000, 8,000 plus times the amount of data that's going to the cloud, as massive as that is, is being processed at the edge. That's a tremendous amount of compute, connectivity, and storage that you've got to be able to manage if you expect to be able to deploy advanced AI capabilities in an industrial environment. And all of this is enabled by the kind of edge computing capabilities that we're able to provide and the key software ingredients that are also there to help enable the kind of applications you want to go deploy in the world's factories. And some of the examples that we're seeing are just astonishing. When we work with some of these factories, we're seeing cases where the human eye is maybe able to detect one in five of the defects coming off of a machine. Not because the humans there aren't talented and skilled and trained in how to find these defects, but because the human eye just simply isn't designed to be able to detect millimeter type variations on a very complex part. Whereas a high definition camera running an inference algorithm at the edge is ideally suited to do those kind of functions. So instead of having to have a number of individuals strain their eyes trying to see something that they're not equipped to see, they can concentrate on dispositioning all the defects that's being detected by the AI system running on that industrial PC right next to the machine. And by doing that, in the examples that we're showing here on this table, there's a factory that we worked with in particular that had 
four different major defect modes that they were trying to detect using AI capabilities. And we were able to see 99.6 or better defect detection rates with extremely low false fail and false positive rates. And this isn't on a sample size of just 10 or 20 or 100 different units. This is running in a factory for a long period of time with tens of thousands of samples running through the machine. So really large volumes of statistically significant data showing a massive ROI. How massive? Well, if you talk to a lot of companies, uh, uh, acceptable ROI might be measured in 18 months. If you can get a return on investment in 18 months, that's considered in, in most industries a no-brainer. All right, have I piqued your interest yet? Hopefully. If you want to learn more, you can go to our Edge Insights for Industrial page or our Edge Controls for Industrial page. These will walk you through all the fundamental architectural decisions that were made and how we provide the hardware and software ingredients necessary to achieve this greater degree of autonomy. How you can go deploy software-defined AI frameworks, software-defined control frameworks in factories, on machines today, and do so in a way that's going to make these systems future ready for the challenges and opportunities that are going to present themselves in the days, months, and years to come. If you want to get access to the software, we've got one location to make that easy. It's the Edge Software Hub. You can click on the Software Hub. You can decide, are you interested in AI? Are you interested in controls? And you can select the kind of configurations that are relevant for the problems you're trying to solve in your factories with your customers and partners. Pick the configuration that's right for you, download the image, get full access to the software, and get started right away. These are steps we're taking to try to make the experience you have on our hardware and software better than it's ever been before and help you enable this fourth industrial revolution. Thank you.